East Report with James Dorsey on Sabah Al Muslim. James, good morning. Welcome. I trust you're doing well. It. Good morning. It's always a highlight to be with you. Leaked documents show that the UAE hired a Swiss intelligence company to destroy the reputations of up to a thousand European politicians, journalists and activists suspected of affiliations with the Muslim Brotherhood or who were critical of the Emirates. Indeed. So the UAE has uh, brandished its image as a tolerant society. Yet at the same time, it has waged what amounts to a dirty tricks campaign against alleged or suspected uh, affiliates of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, as well as of Qatar, whom the UAE till today really suspects of uh, involvement with the Brotherhood. A French-led uh, con- uh, French-led consortium of media has now uh, disclosed 78,000 documents from the internal files of a Swiss company that is headed by a former Swiss intelligence agent, which documents how, on behalf of the UAE, uh, the company went out to destroy uh, the uh, reputations of some 1,000 Europeans. These include uh, former presidential candidates, politicians, academics, journalists, as well as of uh, hundreds of uh, organizations, civil society groups that are uh, that that were suspected of being um, uh, affiliated with the Brotherhood, and these organizations included, for example, Islamic Charity Worldwide, uh, a, a large Islamic uh, relief charity that operates in 40 countries. Now, trying to stay ahead of the game, the UAE plans to build the first uh, uh, gaming resort in in Ras Al Khaimah. It would give the UAE an edge in competition with Saudi Arabia that is attempting to become the region's tourist hub but hasn't yet legalized alcohol. Indeed. So, um, Saudi Arabia has this big push for, uh, for to become a tourism hub. It's just created a new airline, Riyadh Air, that's going to compete with Qatar Airways, with Etihad, with uh, Emirates. Uh, the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has this futuristic science fiction-like uh, city project, Neom, which is going to cost $500 billion, uh, $500 billion and likely is going to be the first place in Saudi Arabia to serve alcohol. Uh, the UAE, Ras Al Khaimah, particularly one of the seven emirates that make up the UAE, is now um, negotiating a deal or has negotiated a deal with Wynn Resorts, which is a major U.S. Las Vegas based operator of uh, casinos. And that would, one, give the, uh, the UAE a leg up in the competition for, um, for tourists. Keep in mind that Saudi Arabia is on multiple fronts trying to take over the UAE's position in the Gulf. And this casino then would be the first ever casino in the Gulf. Now, moving on, uh, in terms of uh, Iran, they have summoned the Russian ambassador to protest the the statement supporting negotiations over Emirati islands in the Gulf seized by Iran in 71. Indeed. So you have three islands in the Gulf that were seized by Iran prior to the Iranian Revolution in 1979. They were seized by the Shah of Iran, who claimed that these islands were Iranian territory. The UAE has always disputed that, but on the other hand, not let that interrupt with trying to improve relations with Iran. However, recently you had a GCC statement that was also uh, signed by the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, which called for negotiations between the UAE uh, and and Iran or arbitration to settle to find fundamentally settle uh, the, the the dispute and the future of these islands and Iran has taken great exception to that as far as it is concerned uh, 
uh, sovereignty over the islands, Iranian sovereignty over those islands, is not negotiable. And as a result, they've called in the uh, Russian ambassador to protest. Now, that's important because at the same time, uh, Iran's international, at least isolation in the West, with U.S. and European sanctions, has, and in the wake of the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, has driven Iran and Russia closer together, but this shows that that is easier said than done. And then finally, the Iranian president visits Africa for the first time in a decade in an effort to strengthen economic relations. Indeed, uh, the Iranian president's first visit in more than a decade. He's visiting three um, African countries, including uh, Kenya, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. Uh, and it's an effort to improve economic relations with uh, with um, uh, with Africa. Now that's important both because Iran needs uh, Iran is in dire economic straits as a result of the U.S. sanctions. It needs to uh, seek alternative ways of uh, enhancing economic growth. And at the same time, this is in competition with both Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And it's in competition both in terms of political as well as religious influence in Africa. Keep in mind that Saudi Arabia uh, and, the, uh, and Iran only very recently, under Chinese auspices, uh, re-established diplomatic relations after seven years. And what this shows is that Sure, you can re-establish diplomatic relations. That doesn't mean you've solved your problems. All right. James, as always, a pleasure speaking to you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Listeners can go to James's website, www.jamesmdorsey.net. Uh, Check out the articles and subscribe to the newsletter.